Hello and welcome to the United Community Channel. This is your match preview for Manchester United versus Crystal Palace in the Carabao Cup. Plenty to talk about on the back of a good result against Burnley. Let's get right into it. So first and foremost, we're going to talk about rotation. And I suppose, look, Manchester United are not in the best position to rotate players given the amount of players we've got absent at the moment. And look, we know for United, Lissandro Martinez, Harry Maguire and Mason Mount were not involved in the game against Burnley on Saturday. However, Varane came off the bench uh, due to, I suppose, injury that we had. Uh, no, sorry, it wasn't even injury. It was obviously Johnny Evans was, you know, not 90 minutes uh, available for 90 minutes. Uh, and we also then had Sofian Amrabat make his debut at left back. Uh, and look, we also seen Donny van der Beek uh, was on the substitute bench as well. You know, we've seen Regulon, he was replaced in the latter stages by Amrabat. Uh, Ten Hag did say that he was taken off because he had an illness and he was playing through that illness rather than the hamstring injury that he appeared to get. Now, it is a concern given the fact that we are paper thin when it comes to Fullbacks. Uh, so, look, we also know Kobe Mayne, who was seen running last week at Carrington, uh, and we know, look, Mount and Maguire are both back in training as well uh, this week. So, we should be able to rotate within the squad, you would think. You know, now it, it also depends on how serious Eric Ten Hag is going to take the Carabao Cup again. Obviously, we are the holders of it. So, you would expect him to go strong. Even last year, we did see that, you know, we didn't have a lot of depth in our squad last year as well, in terms of real, real quality. And Eric Ten Hag tended to go as strong as he possibly could during each game. There was very rarely a game where Eric Ten Hag played, you know, the youths or played, you know, the fringe players. He tends to go as strong as he possibly can. Now, look, I think, you know, the situation is completely different this time. We didn't have this many injuries last year as we do now. So I think he is going to have to be quite smart. We've also seen the likes of Garnacho unable to get onto the pitch the last few games, which is quite strange. He's unable to get a start. You know, he had a brilliant breakthrough season. And I think I'm going to do a separate video on Garnacho and, and because it's quite a concern that he can't get on the pitch at the moment. He's had his breakthrough season. He really should be kicking on now. And why is that that he isn't? So it'll be interesting to see whether he gets a start or not. Is it because maybe he's wanting to play on the left-hand side more than anything else and we know Rashford is going to take up that spot? Is he maybe unwilling to play on the right? I don't know. We're going to have to maybe talk about that in a later video. But I would like to see him play. Look, we obviously see, we obviously seen Palestri play against Bayern Munich. I didn't think he'd done anything wrong. He was up pro against probably one of the best left-backs in the world in Alfonso Davies that night. And, you know, he didn't do anything wrong. So I think he could easily come in. And, of course, we've seen Hannibal play against Burnley the other, the other night. And I thought he had a right good game. So... I think we can have rotation within this game. What type of rotation we'll have, that remains to be seen. And of course, I'll get into my predicted 11 in a few minutes. But I think because of the games coming thick and fast between now and the next international break, obviously the Champions League is back as well. We are going to have to rotate as much as possible because the last thing we want is for more injuries, you know, within the squad, especially... You know, when we're pa so, so paper thin at the moment, uh, it's unreal. So, uh, look, let's see what happens. Let's see what Eric Ten Hag does. But I do think rotation is going to be important. Now, That's next right. up, we're going to talk about defensive consistency. And I think it is something that we need to be working on and striving towards in the upcoming games for, for you know, the entire season, you would have to say. Uh, again, I go back to what I've said on previous videos that, you know, the basis of last season's performance through, a, I suppose, an overall season. It was based on a good defence. And we didn't concede a lot of goals. We obviously didn't score a lot of goals. We've been conceding a lot of goals this season so far. Now, obviously, it was great to get a clean sheet against Burnley. And I think our defence done really well. Regulon, especially at left-back. I mean, there's been talks now that Manchester United have been very impressed in the background with him. And that if he keeps these performances up, United could potentially look at making the loan deal a permanent one. And it's it's... Something that I could, I wouldn't be against at all. He's shown real desire, real heart. And again, I mean, I've said it before, he looks like a player that is fighting for his future. Now, of course, we've got some good quality left-backs already at the club. Luke Shaw, um, Terrell Malassia. But I think, I mean, if, if 
if by chance Regulon does get, uh, you know, a, a permanent deal with Manchester United, I'm all for it because you can't rest on your laurels. If there's a player that comes in that plays the way the manager wants, that that looks better than, you know, maybe the, the, the current players that are there, then why shouldn't he get a deal? So I'm all for that. Look, the law has, has been, you know, consistent enough at right back, you would have to say. Our centre-back partnerships have, have been chopping and changing. Obviously, we've seen Johnny Evans come in and play very well. Let's not get too carried away, though, with Johnny Evans. He had a good game, and I was delighted he did. And, you know, Bruno Fernandes gave him man of the match, and he deserved it, in, in my opinion. But let's not get too carried away. He should not be our long-term option at centre-back. We should be playing Lissandro Martinez, Victor Lindelof, or Varane, where possible, you know. And obviously, Harry Maguire does fall into that category then as, uh, alongside Johnny Evans. You know, obviously, Eric Ten Hag has played up the fact that he's injured. Is he? I don't know. We've tried to get him out of the club, Eric Ten Hag made him aware that he wasn't part of his plans. He refused to move, and now all of a sudden he's not in the squad for the last few games. Coincidence? I don't know. But that will become more apparent as the games and the season goes on, whether Eric Ten Hag is going to favour Johnny Evans or Harry Maguire in terms of a backup to, to, to what we currently have there. So, But look, m more than anything else, clean sheets are going to be in, you know, vitally important for Manchester United. We're not playing that well at the moment. We've got a lot of injuries. Clean sheets are what will give us the chance to go on and win games, you know. And they, they, I, I have a feeling over the, over the coming weeks, maybe that you are going to see one nil wins and maybe not great performances, but United scraping out results. And I'm okay with that until we get everybody back, until we get a settled team that, you know, that's fit and healthy and playing well together. I will take these one nil wins, no problem, uh, you know. And I think the basis of that will come from a good, solid back four, back five as well with Onana, who, by the way, had a really good game against Burnley also. Now, let's talk about Crystal Palace. And look, I mean, Crystal Palace are a good team, I would say. And I think Roy Hodgson has done a really good job taking them over again and really kind of making them a team that are hard to beat. Uh, but look, I mean, I suppose in terms of team news for them, Mark Gay, he did return on the weekend for them at centre-back, which is going to be a big boost for them, you would have to say. But they're still without players like Elise, Tompkins, Lerma, these types of players that are quite important for them. But look, I mean, they've still got some good quality in that team. We're talking Edouard, Schlupp, Eze, Jordan Ayew, all good players that can, you know, cause you a lot of trouble. And this is the kind of competition that you would expect the likes of Crystal Palace to really take seriously and try to get a good cup run going. Uh, and... I think home advantage here is a, is really, really important for Manchester United because I think Crystal Palace away is a very difficult game and it's a, it's, it's, it's quite a, a different game to playing them in your home ground. You know, and look, obviously they're coming off the back of, you know, is it a disappointing nil-nil draw with Fulham? Probably not, you know, a London derby, but they're not going to be a pushover at all. And I think... We really are going to have to be on our toes here. We're, I think it's important that Manchester United get back to winning games at Old Trafford because obviously we've seen we lost, uh, you know, against Brighton and that that whole kind of home record, you know, went by the wayside. So I think the quicker we can get back to winning games at Old Trafford, the better. Try put some runs together, but again, we cannot take Crystal Palace, you know, for granted. They've got some dangerous players, especially in, the in you know, in forward areas. United are really going to have to be on their game. And that goes back to what I said previously about our defensive display. What kind of defence goes out? Whatever it is, is going to have to be resolute because there are going to be dangers within this Crystal Palace squad. But again, I, I would go back to say, you know, I, I say this nearly on every match preview now, that on paper, United should have enough to get the job done against Crystal Palace. But on paper and on the pitch are completely different things. You have to go out and work hard. You have to go out and be resolute, you know, be determined and take your chances when they come. Now, let's get into our predicted 11 here. Now, and again, look, this is one that is, is quite hard to predict in my opinion. 
I, I, it's hard to know what Eric Ten Hag is going to do, especially in around the midfield and the forward areas. I mean, there is, you know, a lot of talk about potential big players, you know, maybe getting dropped to the bench. We'll get into that in a moment. I would be surprised if that does happen. Uh, but look, I'll, I'll put my starting eleven up on the screen here that I think could potentially start. Uh, and again, let me know what you would go with in the comment section below. But uh, I'm going to go, obviously, with uh, Andre Onana in goal. I think the back four... You know, I, I've made one change with it. I think Varane will probably come back in instead of Johnny Evans. Other than that, it's the same. Regulon, Delo and Lindelof as well. So, again, I think that's our strongest back four at the moment. In midfield, then, uh, I've gone with Casemiro, Amrabat and Bruno Fernandes. Look, obviously, we've seen Amrabat come in and make his debut, albeit at left-back. But I think the only position he hasn't played for his national team is in goal. He's played basically everywhere. So... Uh, you know, no problems with him there. But I do think he'll come into that midfield instead of maybe Scott McTominay. Again, I thought Scott McTominay was poor against Burnley during the week. So, th th I mean, nothing personal against him, but I think the more we can keep him out of the team, the better we'll be. Uh, and a forward line then, I've gone with Garnacho on the right, Rashford on the left, and Hyland through the middle. Now, look, again, I think Rashford's performances haven't been spectacular over the last few games. You know, there could be question marks whether he gets dropped to the bench or not. I don't think Eric Ten Hag will do that. I really don't. But I do want to see Garnacho come in, I have to say it. Now, again, we may see the likes of Mason Mount come in on that right-hand side. I think he's probably going to be used there an awful lot this season. And if he's ready to go, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, look, again, he's probably only coming back from injury. You would maybe expect that he might come in you know, onto the bench and maybe be used after 60 minutes or, or, or so on and so forth. So I think this is probably, well, I think this is, you know, probably the strongest team we could put out. Again, you, you could have some rotation there. You know, you just don't know, you know, does Palestri come in? Does McTominay stay? Does Martial maybe start, give Highland a rest? You know, it depends how much he wants to rest players. Um, you know, we, we mentioned Mason Mount already. You know, Martinez is only coming back from injury as well. So, I think this is probably the team he's going to go with. Again, I don't think we've got one of these right yet. So, Eric Ten Hag always has one or two changes, you know, in mind that we don't really, you know, put our finger on. But again, look, let me know what you think in the comment section below. What starting eleven would you go with? But I do think this should be enough to get the job done against Crystal Palace. Now, if we're going with a score prediction, again, like I said, Manchester United should have enough to get the job done here. Score prediction at home. I want to see goals. I want to see goals. I want to see attacking intent. I want to see a solid defensive display again like we did against Burnley. We've been improving over the last couple of games, I have to say, and it's been fine margins. The Brighton game, okay, take that in isolation. But even I think against Arsenal, we played quite well. You know, in parts against Bayern Munich, we played quite well. And I thought we played quite well against Burnley in terms of controlling the game. I mean, a lot of people were saying Burnley had 60% 60 per, uh, 60 possession. Okay, grand. United were allowing them to have the ball. All right, we'll defend. Happy days. Hitch on the counter-attack. And I think we actually controlled the game quite well. I think in the heat of the moment, you can say, you know, you want more when you're shouting for your team when it's live. You want goals. You want attacking intent. But I think United controlled the game quite well. I want to see more of that. I'm going to go with a 2-0 win to Manchester United. Home advantage is big here. We should have enough to get the job done at Old Trafford. Yeah, 2-0 to me, for, for me, for Manchester United. Again, let me know your score prediction in the comment section below, guys. We're going to be doing a live watch along for it tomorrow night on YouTube, so make sure you're getting involved in that. Hit the like and subscribe button, hit share as well. Turn on the bell notification, you'll get notified then anytime we've got some new content out or anytime we go live. Thanks for watching, hope to see you tomorrow night. Take it easy.